Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda. This is a vlog of my late autism and ADHD diagnosis. And I'm sitting on the floor today because that's just what it called to me. Um, sometimes I really like to try to pay attention to what kind of sensations my body's wanting or needing in the moment. And it's just a way that I found that helps regulate my nervous system. Like it's these little, just the, the thought will just pop in my head. Like you want to lay down on the floor right now. And before my diagnosis, I'd be like, Oh no, that's silly. Why would you do that? You know, it's weird to stop everything you're doing and just lay down on the floor. <laughs> I mean, cause it does sound weird, but I've done that before. And I'll just like lay down <laughs> Um, it's like I'm in my own freaking home. I mean, I don't do this like in, um, you know, the grocery store or something because that'd be gross. But I did at a craft store recently. One day I was walking up and down the aisles and I got really overwhelmed. It was uh, right before Christmas and right before Christmas in a craft store is extremely overwhelming. I don't know what made me go in there. But anyway, it was loud, it was bright, the smells, because there's a lot of cinnamon and um, just like craft smells, I don't know. And I got really overwhelmed and I did go find like a kind of corner of the store and just sit down for a minute to regulate because I was feeling like a um, meltdown happening. <laughs> and my kids were with me and they kind of just kind of sat with me. They're teenagers, but you know, it's like we all just needed a moment. And then we we're able to continue shopping. That's the only time I've really done that in a public place. Um, I got a couple of weird looks at me, but nobody stopped to talk to me or anything, which was fine by me because I just needed a moment. Um, but yeah, around my house, there are times where I like to sit in my closet because it's nice and cozy and quiet. A lot of times when I'm cooking dinner, I'll sit in my pantry and... Um, Cause I have, and it's technically a walk-in pantry. It's not, it's not that big. It's literally big enough for me to just sit on a stool in there. And while dinner's cooking, it's just like little cozy, quiet place for a minute. And I, sometimes <laughs> I will be upstairs and the thought of just like crawling in my cool bathtub, clothes on and everything, just and sitting in the bathtub without water or anything just like the, the the coziness of the bathtub um it's just really nice so if you can and these like weird thoughts like pop into your head of like hey my body wants to do this thing and it's not dangerous or harmful or anything like that then do it so so i was about to start filming this video and i was like trying to decide where i wanted to sit and it just popped in my head on the floor today like that's just what felt comfortable so here we are um and these little things have really just helped me i don't know if they'll help you or not but that isn't what i had in mind for this video so i want to kind of talk about what i actually had in mind today so i've mentioned a couple of times because this is my vlog and so i vlog my life um that my current hyper fixation is writing a book and it's been really fascinating and i'm so glad that i like went with that hyper fixation because i've had this thought before in my in my past where like i want to write and i've never let myself explore that because you know i have totally fantasia which means i can't visualize in my mind and I think that affects my writing. Um, and then just being autistic, I think my writing style might be different than, you know, neurotypical people in school. So I had teachers growing up, you know, always tell me that my writing wasn't very good. And so that voice, I think, would just prevent me from pursuing any time I had the idea of a story or a book or anything that I'd ever want to write. But you know, unmasking and like learning that I am different than neurotypical people and that's okay. It's like given me this freedom to just like be and explore and just try things without the limitations or um, expectations of what other people might think about me. And so <clears throat> when I first got this like idea for this book, 
my autistic side was saying, okay, you need to research everything there is to know about publishing a book, deep dive in and know what you're getting into. And then because, you know, even before diagnosis, I've lived on this earth long enough to know that if I did that, it would have killed the creativity because it wasn't an autistic special interest. This is a definitely a ADHD hyperfixation or hyperfocus. So I'm like, mm, no, I'm not going to. I'm just going to start writing. Like follow the ADHD urge and just do the thing that my brain is wanting to do at this moment. So I purposely did not look into what it's going to take to publish or, you know, anything. And part of that is because the other aspect to this is knowing that it is an ADHD hyperfixation. I am going, or I went into this project without any attachments to whether or not I was going to finish it. Like I, I'm having fun and that's all that matters. Well, as I've been writing, so it's been a little bit over a month now, as I've been writing, I have gotten more attached. I'm now currently almost at 60,000 words and I'm having more fun. I'm getting more attached to my characters. I'm writing this as a disability affirming uh, book. So my main character is autistic and I just, I love the idea of having more autistic representation in media. So I am getting attached to the idea of like, oh, maybe I should publish this. But I'm having to be careful because I'm also pathological demand avoidance profile of autism. And if I start focusing on an end product, two things are going to happen. One, it'll feel like a demand on my system and that will shut me down. And two, with ADHD hyperfixations, it's all about the dopamine in the moment. As soon as you stop producing the dopamine, the... Um, the, the hyperfixation will end. And that's why so many people with ADHD will get this really big grand idea and it's really exciting and people will want to support them and cheer them on, but we don't have the luxury of the final, of a future planning. We don't have the luxury of future planning because if we look too far into the future, that's not, unless it gives you dopamine to do that. For most of us, that's not what's causing the dopamine. What's causing the dopamine is the excitement of whatever's happening right now. So if you start looking to the future, it's going to feel like overwhelming or, you know, it's going to kill off that dopamine and then the project will end. That's why I feel like so many ADHD projects get like... I don't want to use the word failure, but that's the language that us ADHD people have gotten labeled with is that we fail or we quit. And what happens is just the dopamine ends. So you need to, and I need to stay focused right now in the creativity, in the moment. And what happened, which made me kind of like realize all of this is that I have a friend who also has written a book and she is now at the point where she wants to publish the book. And so the other day she was texting me that she was feeling really discouraged because of like the cost of publishing and if you self publish or the how hard it is to go traditional publishing route. And I was purposely trying not to get that information. Um, but she shared it with me because that's where she is in the process. And so I want to support her and like cheer her on and like, oh my gosh, you can do this. Like, um, we'll figure it out. But also now I have access to like some information that I was specifically trying to avoid, which did because like your brain can't separate stuff. And so it really kind of did derail my creativity the last couple of days. Like all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be able to finish this book. This is going to be too hard and all these like negative things. And so I'm like, okay, I need to separate like, what's going on with her um, from my project because I need to focus on the fact that I originally from the very beginning said I may or may not publish this book and I have to keep that in my mind because if I don't 
I, I will kill my own project. And I don't want to do that. It's like I'm playing mind games with myself. It's like if I want the goal to publish the book, I have to legitimately convince myself that it is 100% okay if I never do publish the book. It's so mind twisty, but it's like a brain hack that works for me. Um, and as soon as I get too attached to the idea of publishing, then it will absolutely like crush the dopamine. So today, because like I haven't really been able to write much the last two days, and part of that did have some other circumstances. I injured my back, which is feeling better now that I'm sitting on the floor. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do that <laughs> yesterday. Um, I injured my back, and so sitting at my computer desk to write wasn't very good. So between having my hurt back and not being able to physically write, and then two, um, just all of a sudden feeling like this like crushing weight of like, oh my gosh, this project is so big. Why did I take this on? Um, I've kind of had like two days where I've written some, but not very much. So today what I'm doing is I'm kind of going back and rereading what I've written to kind of, kind of get re-inspired, re-invigorated you know, with my characters again. And um, I do hope to get some more writing done today. I'm really, I am excited about this book idea. I mean, it's not anything grandiose. It's a fun romance novel, but it's, you know, disability affirming. It normalizes, a, you know, an autistic relationship. And I think it's a fun read, um, personally. So anyway, I just wanted to talk a little bit about ADHD and projects because I know that is something that so many people struggle with because ADHD people are super, super creative and can like come up with solutions to things that can be really big world solving problems or sometimes even something just small, but it, it, it can like make a difference. And then the dopamine stops and the project ends and then people in that person's life are like, oh my gosh, why do you always start projects? You're such a quitter. And that kills off creativity faster than anything. So my biggest advice, if you are somebody who has ADHD and you get intense hyperfixations, focus on the now, focus on protecting the dopamine production at all costs because once the dopamine stops brain says no so um i hope that helps anybody else out there and until the next video bye guys